Global climate is one of the many stories knocked off the front pages by this pandemic, but even as the world economy stalls, it's still there. In a remarkable new Netflix film, David Attenborough has been looking back on his life and coming up with some possible ways to deal with the immense challenges facing the planet. It isn't all bad news. I talked to him and the World Wildlife Fund's Colin Butfield just before social distancing was introduced. And I asked Sir David about coronavirus, of course, but first he explained why he had agreed to make what he calls his own personal witness statement on climate change. I am David Attenborough, and I am 93. I've had the most extraordinary life. It's only now that I appreciate how extraordinary. The living world is a unique and spectacular marvel. Yet the way we humans live on Earth is sending it into a decline. Human beings have overrun the world. We're replacing the wild with the tame. This film is my witness statement and my vision for the future. The story of how we came to make this our greatest mistake. And how, if we act now, we can yet put it right. If we don't change anything, uh, the, the temperature of the world will go up, and that is the, the, the biggest thing of the changes, because from that stems all sorts of things. It stems climate change. Uh, it, it, the population enlarges, uh, carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere, the temperature of the sea rises, you lose a lot of fertility. Um, the... the uh, uh, reverberations of that simple change are going to be enormous unless we do something about it. And this is the very last moment when we have in which we can actually hope to, to stem some of these disasters the, that we've seen. It's the last of what you call a series of one-way doors. Yes. What are the one-way doors? Oh, the one-way door is, whether in, is avoiding uh, the increase in temperature, the world temperature. Uh, because if we get into a situation where, in fact, the northern, the uh, Arctic uh, ice cap melts, that will bring such huge changes that it's almost impossible to predict uh, with any confidence. Is that right? Do you think anything? I completely agree. You get a point where, say, the methane is being released from the frozen permafrost. That sort of tipping point is, is, is a one-way door. It's, it's, the acceleration will be extraordinary. And all of this is quite soon. Colin, in, in David and in this film, you have the best possible advocate you could have for the cause that you believe in. What would you do to get this film in front of Donald Trump for an hour and a half? <laughs> Good question. Um, <laughs> so I, I wonder if it actually sway someone like Donald Trump. I think it would sway most people in the, in the, in the population that understand David's a trusted voice. I think that experience and understanding w w could change most people that would be watching this program. Donald Trump, I, I would love to get in front of him. I'm not 100% sure it would change his mind. There's, I'm not sure anything would. I suppose the semi-serious point is this is a film... I agree with you. I think this will change attitudes, change minds by itself. So the question is, can you get it to the world leaders, the opinion makers, uh, the opinion changers who need to see it? Um, I think we can, actually. I think... I, I, and that's definitely part of the hope, is that we try to get it in front of the people that can make the biggest possible difference, as well as, of course, as many viewers as possible. But yes, I think if you're, a, if you're a leader of a bank, you're a leader of a country, I think you should, you should hear, hear, hear what David's seen. Mm -hmm. um, David, there is a moment about two-thirds of the way through the film when I kind of want to cut my throat. I think it's all so awful and so despairing. But the last part of the film suggests that even at this late stage, we can genuinely change course, rewild the planet, and live differently. How can we do that? Um, well, we can look to the younger generation who are actually going to do it because they will actually be able to see the consequences of what they do. Um, and uh, my lot are dying off. And the, the, the one, we are the ones that cause the problem. Um, and, uh, but if you can re uh, live in a more modest economic way uh, as an ambition, don't waste things. Think this world is precious. Think your time is precious. Uh, think that the rest of the natural world is precious and all those things need cherishing. That's the fundamental attitude. The world is not uh, a bowl of fruit from which we are designed, can just take what we wish. 
we are part of it. And if we destroy it, we destroy ourselves. And you have kind of hero countries, I can always describe them in this film. You've got the Netherlands growing far more food than it used to. You've got Japan with its population now pretty stable. And you've got Costa Rica. Uh, the World Wildlife Fund wants lots of rewilding, of course. You know, it's, the, the clue is in the name. But Costa Rica has actually done this. Yes. For, for a, a, a political leader with great power to simply say, we don't need an army. If we were going to, if the Donald Trump decided to invade Costa Rica, there's nothing we could do. So why do we waste all our money on our army? Why don't we take that money from the national budget and turn it into rewilding and ecotourism? And that's not just empty words. They've done it. They've done it. And 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 the the the, natu the, the nature reserves that they've got there, and they're part of the tropical rainforest, joy to go to. And nature comes back relatively quickly. You make a very interesting point at the end of the film, which I won't entirely give away. But at the end of the film, you say, you used to think this was about saving the planet. And now you realise it's not, because nature will always look after itself. It's about saving us. Yes, it's perfectly true. And I went into a part just recently, and a few week, weeks ago, went into a part of, the, of Costa Rica, and I uh, cut my way through. <laughs> it had cut a part in the world, and, and looked at the camera and said, I was here 25 years ago, and this was a meadow in which there were cows. And this is a now tropical rainforest. 25 years, that's all. So it can, it can all be done. Every other population in nature that grows very, very fast comes to some kind of reckoning. And I'm just wondering, as I look around here and now, whether coronavirus is not our reckoning. In other words, coronavirus or some other kind of virus sweeping across the human well, population. Well, that's true, but then Black Death was a, a virus, wasn't it? Pretty, pretty serious yeah. one, as I recall. Yes, it was, but it was a virus. Um, mm. And of course, anybody who knows anything about keeping animals of any kind, the more, the more dense population you keep, the quicker the disease will spread. And there's never been a denser population of human species until this moment. So in a sense, this is, we are victims of our own success in terms of our numbers and our interconnectedness. Yes, certainly. For a lot of people watching this film, they're going to really want to change their lives. They're going to want to change something about themselves that helps prevent the disasters that you describe and lead us towards the happier future that is still possible. If there's a single thing that people watching could do, what would you recommend? Stop waste. Stop waste of any kind. Stop wasting power. Stop wasting food. Stop wasting plastic. Don't waste. This is a precious world. Celebrate and cherish. So lots of world leaders, you hope, will be able to see this film and have their minds changed in some way. What would your message to them be now, Sadesh? This is the last chance. Um, there are short-term problems and long-term problems. A politician is tempted to deal with short-term problems all the time and neglect long-term problems. This is not only a long-term problem, it is the biggest problem humanity has faced ever. Please examine it and please respond. Sir David, Colin, thanks both very much. And that remarkable film, David Attenborough, A Life on Our Planet, will be released in cinemas and on Netflix later this year. Everybody should see it.